After a heartwarming inaugural session, I, Dr. Shipra Jain, welcome you all in technical session one, building up startup ecosystem. I would like to invite on stage the chairperson, Dr. W. Selva Murthy, President, MIT Science, Technology and Innovation Foundation, to please come on stage, sir. I would request experts, Dr. Poini Bhatt, CEO, Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, IIT Bombay, Mr. Alok Pandey, Founder and CEO, iTech Group, Dr. Sandhya Lakshmanan, Scientist, CSIR, NISPO, Dr. Sujit Patacharya, Chief Scientist and Dean Policy Research, CSIR Nisper to please come on stage. Please, sir, ma'am, take your seats. I would request Dr. Sujit Patacharya to felicitate Dr. W. Selva Murthy, President, MIT Science, Technology and Innovation Foundation. Sir, please. Now, I would request Dr. Vipin Kumar to felicitate Dr. Poini Bhatt. I would request Mr. Avinash Shittich to felicitate Mr. Alok Pandey. Dr. Sujit Patacharya to felicitate Dr. Sandhya Lakshmanan. Now, I request Dr. Sandhya Lakshmanan to provide an overview of this technical session. Dr. Sandhya did her PhD in Physics from Bhartiyar University as an Inspire Fellow. She pursued her postdoctoral program from University of Munich. Her research interests are quantum chemical modeling and chemical dynamics of reactions. Please, ma'am, come on the stage. The dais is all yours. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to all. Uh, so the technical session one, as we know, the title is Building Up a Startup Ecosystem. So from morning, we have been hearing that the startup ecosystem in India has been experiencing a tremendous growth in recent years. 
and with an increase in the number of successful startups across a wide range of industries the indian startup ecosystem has emerged as one of the most one of the world's most dynamic startup hubs there are several key elements that drives the startup ecosystem building and firstly the key role is played by visionary entrepreneurs who are sitting in the audience and in the dais who want to develop innovative solutions for a specific industry then comes the incubators and accelerators who provide guidance and resources while industry collaborators promote adoption further research and development collaborations aid in connecting academic knowledge with stakeholders and the promotion of sustainability and safety is achieved through grants and regulations from the government last but not the least networking events allow startups to showcase their ideas and from strategic partnerships thereby driving innovation and growth a few of the success factors for the startups are government support and policies access to funding talent pool and supportive culture so india has created various innovative policy mechanisms uh, for creating a startup ecosystem however there are certain challenges that startups continue to face so this session enriched by key experts will share their experiences on building up a startup ecosystem possible ways to address the challenges and leveraging the strengths and this session will be chaired by professor w selvamurthy who is the president amity science technology and innovation foundation and director general for amity directorate of science and innovation and chancellor amit university chatisgarh he is promoting and coordinating research and innovation in all amit institutions he did his post graduation in human physiology from christian medical college vellore in 1972 and phd from university of delhi in 1982 and he has received a doctor of science from swami vivekananda yoga anushandana samsthana deemed university in bangalore in 2006 and recently he was awarded the degree do, degree of doctor of science in recognition of his contributions to the field of science and his distinctive place in the scientific world by fakir mogan university and he was also awarded honorary degrees of doctor of science from bardia university coimbatore amit university and karunia university he was also awarded the tangam vasudevan research prize by the indian association of biomedical award scientists in 1981 and was a fellow of the national academy of medical sciences with a with this brief introduction i now hand over the session to professor selvamurthy excuse me uh, sir will delivering the will be delivering the keynote address also thank you sir thank you i am from your university Good afternoon, friends. What a great pleasure to meet the young, budding leaders who is going to build a new, vibrant India. So, when I interacted with some of the startups who are sitting on the dais, off the dais, I was so fascinated, looking at ten years hence, where India would be. in terms of economic strength military strength knowledge strength i think you people are going to see that that amrit kal in which india becoming a economic power and a global super power which is already happening with this g20 where we were able to demonstrate to the world that even in diversity we can bring unity that is the power of all of you sitting in the dais as well as off the dais because india has a strong root of vedas upanishad bhagavad gita yoga all this is there in our genes so it is how do we manifest our kundalini shakti and bring that out and go for an aggressive approach to succeed success by compulsion that is what is the message i am going to give it to all startup we can succeed and we will succeed so i will take you through a little of what is the ecosystem today available and in this panel 
I'm expecting a strong recommendation emanating from this, from here as well as from the floor. What India needs to do as a nation, if we have to really bring a new paradigm, new ecosystem for startup, even though we are now third largest ecosystem in the world, and we have 110 unicorns, are even increasing now 113. So all this is happening. But then how do we increase the pace of this development? How do we make them succeed more into transition from startup to unicorns? What we need to do? This is what I'm expecting from all of you sitting here and from the floor, because we are going to make it very participatory, inter interactive, not that only lectures will be given our people, so our, the speakers over there, but the panelists will trigger some thoughts, but I like to hear from all your experiences, not what you have only succeeded. That is one part of the story is that what you have done to succeed, but more important will be what needs to be done as a nation, whether it is at a central level or state level or at the ecosystem level, the stakeholders, how do we enable you to do much better, much faster? This is what going to be the panel discussion. Can we just dim the lights here? Is it possible that these tube lights so that they can see it better? These lights. So I take you to the next. My deep appreciation, Dr. Sujit Bhattacharya and the whole team, Naresh, and all others who are responsible to bring all of us together and looking at a new roadmap for India. So thank you, Sujit Ji. You brought the best, best brains here and the best startups who are bubbling with energy, enthusiasm. So I'm sure you will get a lot of recommendations coming out for sending it to the government and other stakeholders. See, this is one success which we had, just G20. But more important will be, what do they discuss about startup in this G20? One of the focus area was on startup. You have to read this document. I want every one of you to read the declaration in which G20 nations have now said what we need to do for startup. And there are many, many new uh, things have been promulgated which I want you people to read. The first thing is they are going to allocate about $1 trillion, $1 trillion investment from G20 nations every year. It's not that one, one investment. It is going to be $1 trillion available uh, for you to start up to grow globally. Don't restrict yourself only to Indian market. The whole global market is there with you. So I would like to see that you know, G20 nations have approved and they have committed to put $1 trillion annually for startups in their countries. Also, they will tweak and share the best practices of startup from each country of the G20 nations so that this will become a global movement of startup. So that is what I wanted to emphasize here. And then you are the natural growth engine, the startups and MSMEs. So that is why you are important for the country, for the humanity. Because your responsibility is not just 1.4 billion people. It's 7 billion people are our responsibility. So think big in that fashion when you are starting up with a startup don't confine yourself only to Indian market. Now we also had just three days before the G20 meeting in Amity University, 4th and 5th of September, and a big event where more than 10,000 people, you know, both online, offline. Physically, we had about uh, 5,000 people in different auditoriums, as well as in the main auditorium, 1,000 people in Amity University, where Dr. Jitendra Singh came and inaugurated the conference in person. And also he inaugurated a startup. He suggested when we went to meet him to, invite, to be a chief guest, to be the chief guest for the function, he said, start with a startup. So we had a round table before the main session, inaugural session, so that the startup can interact with Dr. Jitendra Singh. So we had a round table on startups. I will share some thoughts, what emanated from that discussion, what we learned from that, which may be uh, useful to you. And also this G20 document, which we have prepared. And these are the people who participated in the panel. And we had uh, uh, very important people coming, like Savita Alavet. You may be knowing from IIT Delhi, 
who flew thousand drones at a time, you know, with, with, with a formation. So she grew as a small a professor from IIT and she became a big startup. Now she is, uh, she is a hundreds of crores worth company now and both military as well as civilian applications of drones are going to be the big market, not only in India, but globally. So like this, we brought many people and successful people who shared their success models, success stories, the journey by which they were able to go through. What are the obstacles, failures, and also criticism they faced? How did they overcome? So all these were deliberated, and we had wonderful uh, meeting, round table on startup. I want every one of you to read New Scientist 2005. 2005 issue, the 19th February 2005 of New Scientist, in which they predicted at that time, almost 15 years ago, India, the next knowledge superpower. India, the next knowledge superpower. This prediction is not by Indian scientists. The world scientific community predicted. So now with all this STIP policy, national education policy, the whole ecosystem is being created for startup and also the innovation ecosystem. I would also like you to see the statistics because some people some of the youngsters may not know where India stands with 0.7% GDP input, how you have maximized the output. We are third in scientific publications in terms of numbers. We are seventh in nature index. We are ninth in patents. We have jumped in innovation, global innovation index from 81 to 40. So all this happened in the last one decade. So why I want to say this is with minimal input, we can maximize the output and outcome. That is the power of you people, all of us sitting here. So one should realize this, human mind potentials are infinite. Stretch yourself, awaken this, passion, junoon, create a junoon to succeed. If you do that, then you will create a new world order. And in startup ecosystem, we are the third largest ecosystem in terms of numbers. It was 100 sometime back about five, six years ago. Now we have crossed one lakh startups. And unicorns, a few, but now it has become 110. And it's growing almost every, every month, a few, uh, the unicorns are being added up. So that is why this vibrant system in which startups are going to play a very important role. That, uh, these startups are in many, many other disciplines. Like if you look at some, more than 50, 50 disciplines in which the startups are coming. It's just not only IT, services, but also in hardcore, deep tech, high tech, Areas also, the startups are now emerging, whether it's agri-tech, health tech, food tech, and financial tech, fintech, edu-tech. In all the areas, now the startups are growing. Why India will succeed? Why only in third position? Why not in first position? We will reach the first position. India has the advantage. That is, first thing is the knowledge centers like NPL and the national, uh, the you have the NISPR. All these have been created, DRU, Atomic Energy, Space, uh, CSIR, ICMR, ICAR. We have created national laboratories. We have created universities in which very well equipped laboratories are there. So the whole knowledge centers which are required to create this knowledge ecosystem or the innovation ecosystem is available today, Advantage India. And these labs are comparable to any best in the world. The second is demographic advantage. We are the youngest country in the world today because once innovative phase is between 15 to 30, then you build on your experience, expertise, knowledge, wisdom, and so on. But this phase, the population is here in India. That is the advantage India of the demographic advantage where you want to take risk, you will take risk at that age, not after you get a family and so on. So risk taking is also there. So the demographic advantage which we have is yet another propelling, whether it's a, a hypersonic propulsion will provide to the uh, economic growth. Competent workforce. Now, not that everybody is, the competence is built as well as skill. They are skilled people now who knows, who has a multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary approach to problems. So we have created that competent workforce advantage India. R&D infrastructure, government policy, patronage, which is being given to startups as well as MSMEs, 
and separate ministry is being there and also now collaborations are available. People are want to help you, G20 nations coming, what can we do together? And there, there is an ecosystem when you were seeking collaboration, but today people are coming to India to seek collaboration. So that is why the game changer was because of you people have created this. So in this, let us understand the innovation process for youngsters, the beginners in startup. See, ideation is very important. You want to become a successful startup, the idea, the knowledge is money, knowledge is wealth, knowledge is power. So you have to get hit at the right idea, looking at what is the market demand, what is the global needs, not just only Indian needs or regional needs or local needs, but look at much beyond. So ideation is most important starting point for your success as a startup. The other one is, the other next step would be to how do you translate them, idea to a concept or a proof of concept, and then lead, lead to a deliverable. It could be a product, it could be a technology, it could be a process, or it could be a service or a solution to a problem. So look at the deliverable. Then look at also the strategy. Strategies are important. Not only you make plans, but how do you achieve those plans, the timelines. So you need to have the right kind of strategies. Then always look at a team building. Instead of working solo startup, create somebody from marketing side, somebody from publicity side, and somebody from the financial resource mobilization side. You may be a high tech person, but then you need to bring a consortium. You need to bring a team with you then you will succeed much faster. Then ultimately, you will lead for commercialization. Now, why do we encourage startups? First is, everyone earlier from passing out from university or national laboratories and so on, they were looking for jobs. But now we want people to create jobs instead of looking for a job. So that is possible through startups. I've seen so many people creating jobs here through their startups. And also, it is a drive engine for economic growth. When you say $5 trillion economy, which the country is looking for, this $5 trillion economy will come only through you people. The startup and MSME, which is the largest the, uh, ecosystem in our country. So that is why you are very important. You will contribute to economic growth. Every year to add $1 trillion economy to our GDP will happen through you as well as the other industries. Bringing new competitive dynamic to the economic system. You will bring a new uh, the dynamics here. That is why the IMF and others, have, our predictions are now looking at trajectory, ex exponential slope. They are looking at in terms of our economic growth. Now in the startup, today look at the startup ecosystem. That is the topic, how do you create the ecosystem? Our universities must become cradle of innovation. Because that is the place where you have the young workforce, the B.Tech students, B.Sc students, M.Sc students, M.Tech, PhDs. So universities should become cradle of innovation. The teaching, methodology, entrepreneurship development, incubators, and all this we need to create the setup. So universities is very important. Enabling governmental processes. How do you create angel investors? How do you create CSR coming into this kind of investment as well? So you need to create enabling governmental processes, doing startup easily. That is ease of doing business, ease of doing becoming a startup. We have to create that kind of ecosystem. Administrative processes, financial mechanisms should support the ecosystem growing fast without any small, small uh, problems. Funding organizations, you need also the venture capitalists and also the uh, angel investors. All these are now growing mentors and advisors. Choose the right kind of mentors and advisors who not only in the technology domain, but also in business plan development, marketing, all these are very, very essential. So if you do all this, then you will succeed. Now finally, a couple of slides more. It actually started like student, student startup, whether it is uh, Dell or it is Facebook or it's Microsoft, Yahoo, Dropbox, Google, name anything. Which, which you see today, it's all started as a student startup. I want you to realize. So I want you to dream much bigger than these, what, what I'm sh showing on the slide. But you should become much bigger than this. You are capable. It all started as a student startup. Now they are doing a multi-billion uh, business across the globe. When I look at the Indian startups, 
wonderful, like Make My Trip and Flipkart, Zomato, and housing, housing.com. All this came from Ola. Everything came from student startup. That is why, you know, when I see all the startup in the exhibition, as well as uh, sitting here, I feel charged that it will happen, but I, what we are all dreaming, the prime minister, the ministers, as well as all of us here, that it, it will happen. When I look at robotics, when you, not only in the service sector, but also even in the high-tech area, deep-tech areas, now startups are coming, like robotics, Bitspilani, a big startup is there. And so it is very, very vibrant. I see a new paradigm emerging for the startup in our country. So what could be the best practices? Let us create a free ecosystem, very flexible, autonomous ecosystem. Don't confine, don't restrict, let it go. Like an IT revolution came without government too much intervention. Government only just facilitated, it just happened. Similar things should happen here. So let it be a, a create a free ecosystem not put restrictions. The other one is part and nurture talents, because I see many talents. How do we do hand-holding? How do we mentor them? How do we make them succeed? So you need the right kind of uh, the spotting the talents of the startups and then also taking them ahead and nurturing them. And also the science education in schools, we must bring a new paradigm. Startups can be there from school itself. I see in Amity International Schools, when I go there, so many startups they have made. Schools, children have made startups. So it is so gratifying to see, even at schools, the innovation culture has percolated, not only at universities, colleges, IITs, NITs, and so on. Then encourage and motivate young faculty, younger faculty, who will in turn inspire the innovation culture as well as startup culture. Then human resource mapping, all this student involvement in quality research and promotion of interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary research, don't confine, don't create silos. So that a person should know management, should know finance, should know marketing. So create that population who will have that broader knowledge which is required for a startup to succeed. And also collaborate nationally and internationally. That is the uh, opportunity available today. Now what Amity has done, just only three more slides about Amity, we created the whole ecosystem, starting from an incubator, which has incubated more than 700 companies. And almost 10% startups are doing extremely well, 70 of them. And we have taken equities in those, 10 to 15% equities to do a handholding, mentoring, and also provide the right kind of facilitation, catalyzing the growth of this. Then we, now we have created in three floors, only for startups, incubator. So please do visit. Physically, they can incubate 300 companies at a time. Then we created the complete right from IPR protection cell. We have filed 2,000 patents. Amity has filed 2,000 patents. Many of them are getting translated into product, technology, process, reaching out to the people. Just in the recent two, three years, Meenakshi is sitting here, that we have done about 30 technology transfer to the industry. So you see our product, some of them we have exhibited, is there in the market, be it in agriculture or in other domains. Then we created a directorate of innovation and technology transfer. And then DST enabling, technology enabling center, it was talked in the inaugural session, T, the technology readiness level, TRL, if it is a two, three proof of concept, how do you make them grow to seven or eight so that industry can easily take it and then manufacture them? So we have technology enabling center. Then we have Amity Center for Entrepreneurship Development. We created this, so that is being promoted in a big way. Then we have our own venture capital, Amity Venture Capital, which is looked after by Mr. Amol Chohan. And if you have a brilliant idea, we will be able to support through our venture. So for our startups, we also used other financial mechanisms, but also we gave our own venture capital. So the, finally, the building a strong startup ecosystem is the local business scene assessment. What's the market demand? What does the local locality needs first? Then look at national or regional, national, and then global. Identify the right team and mentors, which I mentioned, and look for the investors, angel investors, venture capitalists, so that the financial thing is a backbone of your success. So you have to have strategies to mobilize that. Networking and collaboration. 
uh, with MSMEs. So you have to tie up with them, or even a big industries, if they are willing to. Then joint ventures, acquisition, merger, all this will happen now. Once you start growing, you become visible. All this will happen. Government patronage support is already there. But tell us what more government has to do so that we will make it as a recommendation and submit to the government. I have been part of the Defense Research and Development Organization for 40 years. So I am part of the government. I am still part of the government in, indirectly from outside. So we want to know that what more needs to be done by the government to make you succeed. Celebrate success stories. We will create awards, recognition mechanisms, so that that will, success will breed success and propel more startups to come. So uh, this is Dr. Ashok Chauhan, the founder of uh, the Amity Group, which is 12 universities in India, 18 campuses abroad, 28 schools, 200,000 students, and 10,000 faculties, 5,000 PhD scholars. He has created this Amity Universe, including startup ecosystem. He has put a target. Next 10 years, 1,000 companies, startup companies, where Amity should take an equity of 10 to 15 percent. Now the last slide with Prime Minister saying that India, by 2030, India would be among the top three countries in science and technology. But I hope it will even become number one in the country. With this, I thank you so much for the panelists who are going to now deliberate their knowledge, wisdom with all of you. But I would like the panelists to address these issues. How you people succeeded? What was the journey, the secret of your success? And then, what needs to be done as a nation? to facilitate more, to achieve more. So I have IIT Bombay, we have expert, and we also have another startup. I will just briefly, just two sentences. So we have two more panelists with us, then we want to open the floor. We want to have enough time for discussion to listen to you, you, your ideas. Dr. Paini Butt, whom I have met when I visited IIT Bombay, because I keep going to all IITs, and we have established a center of excellence in health technologies in IIT Bombay through ICMR. So on the occasion of that, I visited, I interacted. They have created a wonderful incubator, very strong incubator. Visit them. Whenever you are in Bombay, go to IIT Bombay. She's a qualified legal and compliance professional, fellow member of the Institute of Company of Secretaries in, of India, and she has uh, done more than a decade of helping entrepreneurs to grow in the incubators. And she has more than three decades of industry and academia experience. So she is both from academia as well as from industry. It's a very rare breed to find such people. And uh, so we are going to listen to her. And she is in Sine campus of IIT Bombay. And may I now request Dr. Payoni Butt, CEO of Sine IIT Bombay. Let's welcome with a big clap. So, uh, we are very happy to welcome Commander Amit Rastogi, Chairman and uh, Managing Director of NRDC. Uh, welcome, sir. And he will be the chair of the next session on models of successful startups. And also, he will be the guest of honor of the exhibition session. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. So, thank you very much. It's really indeed nice to be here. Like, Dr. Ten minutes? Ten minutes? Okay, I'll try to finish in ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's so encouraging to see academia and like, you know, R&D institutions making startup very, very mainstream. It is becoming integral part of teaching, academic and curricular, curricular as well as uh, extracurricular activities. Uh, we have been seeing this uh, startup as a buzzword, like, you know, in last 10 years, like unicorns and then IPOs and then investors and valuation and lots of words we keep on hearing about it. Uh, this is in last 10 years. I represent an incubator center at IIT Bombay and we started, some of us like, you know, we also have a colleague from NCL Pune. 
some of us started about 20 years back with the help of uh, government like to promote entrepreneurship acad in academic uh, centers yeah and uh, this was more of a brick and mortar in uh, incubator center so you create a support and in those days ecosystem was simply non existent we didn't know we didn't have investors in the country i think many of us didn't know the meaning of incubators and angel investors yeah so those kind of ecosystem was there like uh, businesses or industry were not connecting with startup they were not even connecting with academic institution in that sense startup was too far for them so it was completely basically a milieu where ecosystem word itself was missing let me put this way yeah now gone are the days like you know you have incubation center which is just in brick and mortar models you incubation centers are, cannot be now like you know in in form of value offering physical infrastructure it has to be value driven it has to be support driven so this is the change and i think chairman already spoke about like you know kind of the ecosystem and perhaps you will see quite a repetition on what we are doing because at incubation center we are also emphasizing on lots of like you know ecosystem connecting with larger ecosystem unless we do it we will be redundant so like i'll give you a couple of cases basically like you know present our incubation center as a case study how we build the ecosystem but i can also like you know just to give you a front uh, kind of positioning here is that that from physical infrastructure incubation to value based incubation center what we have achieved we have achieved many exits we have achieved first ever ipo from any incubator in the coming country coming out of our incubator we have achieved first ever unicorn from any incubator there are several and there will be lots of unicorns and ipo in the pipeline but this is what we achieve and this is what like sir you ask about like what incubator can do they can do this they can achieve uh, like you know unicorn they can achieve ipo they can achieve exits they can actually bring out so many disruptive technologies which ex investors cannot basically you know bring out they can support startup with funding they can support startup with like you know lots of value addition but not necessarily technology value addition so that is what incubators basically can achieve bring out more and more disruptive technologies from from the academia yeah let me present you since you gave me just 10 minutes let me like uh, present our case here yeah uh, so this is our journey we started in 2004 with the help of department of science and technology primarily our focus on ip based product based startups and basis for incubation was not only economic growth but also support ventures that have societal impact strategic value for the country like defense and so on and so forth yeah if you look at it in 2004 the word ecosystem was part of our vision so our vision was an ecosystem to foster and support innovation and knowledge based entrepreneurship at iit bombay now the vision is shifting towards creating fund we have also have to go basically you know uh, up in the value value chain out there yeah uh, so Uh, before that we ran 2000 uh, between 4 uh, years or 5 years we ran a pilot 2004 to 14 was more of a institutionalization of the incubation because all of us were learning our uh, uh, like you know uh, our trick of trade what incubation means and that's where i think we we as an incubator community also at sign we institutionalized the process and then more and more expansion value addition businesses started uh, um, expansion started basically in our incubation centers so what typically incubators do like you know and we do it's basically support very early stage ideas proof of concept and typically like in form of grant 
or fellowship program and lots of boot camps, training session and so on and so forth. Yeah. Then basically, you uh, next stage it comes to them was uh, like you know physical incubation. Incubation is little longer engagement with startup, where on need need of the startup based on the need of the startup, you keep on providing customized support to them. Then we also do acceleration program and lots of partnerships and collaboration program, government, industry collaboration, so on and so forth. As an incubator, this is actually the ecosystem, yeah, value addition. You provide physical infrastructure, there is a lab support, there is office support, but that's a basic hygiene factor. Then you enable funding. Then you enable basically, you know, create a pool of mentors, uh, create basically experts, bring them, uh, like, you know, service providers, so you bring them to the incubator centers, and they support startup. We also have so many international programs. So we have international program with Switzerland. It's more of a bringing researchers together from both the ecosystem, exposing them to the market and expert and funding stakeholders in re respective countries. We have programs with Sweden. In Sweden, we invite, like, there's an Indo-Sweden business council. We invite industry and then expose our startups to that industry. And typically, every year, one or two or three startups get basically engaged with industry in terms of actual market access. In India, as well as their, their offices in India, as well as in Europe. We have programs with Taiwan. Taiwan has a very, very strong manufacturing ecosystem. Components, supplies, small manufa uh, manufacturing of small quantities. So Taiwan is a place to go. So we have basic, uh, like just three days back, Taiwanese uh, delegation was in India and they were visiting us. Then there is a networking, like we all know about it, right? As an incubator, we also keep on doing continuous demo day, industry demo day, as well as investor demo day. Every typically three or four demo day take place a year for our startup. And then also we have created kind of a manufacturing, India is very weak in manufacturing ecosystem. It's not that it is not, it is missing, it is there, but you have to connect the dot. So you bring them, by way of relationship, you, you bring them basically, you know, to your incubator and make it accessible for your startups. So that's what basically our incubator ecosystem works. Yeah? Just to give you a sense, like 220 startups we have supported, 1,000 entrepreneurs, 94 companies have successfully graduated. Collectively, all the startups have raised more than 800 million of funding at a collective valuation of $3.5 billion. This is what an incubator ecosystem, mature incubator ecosystem can produce the outcome from any incubator. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if you are a startup, yeah, or thinking of startup, how do you basically, you know, choose your incubator? Yeah, incubators which are closer to that target audience, innovators, entrepreneurs, knowledge base, there is a research, there is a expertise, there is a talent, co-founder, uh, chairman talk about it. Like this, this ecosystem, that academic and R&D ecosystem is so strong, so strong, yeah, it needs to be leveraged, yeah. Second thing, institutional resources like lab test, lab facility, testing, and so on and so forth. Check out how the incubators, their partnership, what kind of activities are happening, what kind of grant funding support they are basically provided, what kind of marketing access support they are provided, what kind of network they have built, what kind of stakeholders they are bringing together. So, like, you talk about, like, this is the, like, you know, representatives of ecosystem. A mature incubator typically bring government, they deal with government, they deal with academia, they deal with investors, they w deal with also cultural impactors. You know, uh, serial entrepreneurs coming back, mentoring startup or investing in startup. Media, 
who spread the stories of the startups, right? Uh, social media evangelists, right? Uh, also, like industry and corporates, they are the adopters of the solution. It's extremely important for the startups to have early validation of what they are building. Once they build, go to the market just to reala realize that it's not going to basically, this is not what market needs. The whole journey of three to five years is basically, you know, uh, is wasted. Very early validation they are required. So have industry experts talking to startup from early on. Uh, and finally, industry association, because they are the biggest lobbyist vis-a-vis -vis government policy. They bring the ecosystem together. So this kind of ecosystem one has to bring together. Yeah. A very quick view on this. Uh, do I have still two or three minutes? Two, two minutes. Minute, okay. So this is a sign ecosystem where we leverage in-house ecosystem of IIT Bombay and we also bring together external ecosystem, investor industry, same thing, same stakeholder that I'm talking about, right? In IIT Bombay ecosystem, we, we have basically not only academic centers, but we also have applied centers who actually now focusing on only translational research, either for licensing or startups. So there are dozens of basically centers in very technology domain that we have them. Very importantly, IIT Bombay has created a very, very uh, startup friendly policies. So they don't charge uh, for IP, big amount for IP. They give IP at a very, very economic cost to the entrepreneur. That too cost to be payable if the startup gets basically successful. Otherwise, IP goes back to IIT Bombay. Very important. This is one thing, Chairman, that how internal, you know, structuring, IP policy, academic mindset, you know, needs to be done. This is one thing basically we need to do. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that ESL. ESL is a student, basically, they are student bodies. I don't know in CICL lab how does it work, but in most IITs you find students, basically they have set up clubs. Through the year they uh, organize awareness programs, they organize business plan competition, they organize workshop, they organize leadership series and that actually creates so much awareness uh, within potential innovator and uh, incubate, uh, sorry, entrepreneur community uh, uh, or target audience that how to take the next step. So I think mostly I'll stop, but I'll give you, before I do that, I'll give you a couple of examples here. Immunet, how they have leveraged the ecosystem. It's a actually RN, uh, IIT Bombay IP got spun out at I, uh, like, you know, in a form of entrepreneurial venture. This is the first ever technology that has come out of uh, any lab in the country which is dealing with cancer therapy, immunotherapy to treat, currently their focus is on uh, blood cancer. Going forward, they are also going to get into solid tumor cells as well. This is a company, first they, they developed the technology at IIT Bombay. IIT Bombay at a very, very easy terms, they transferred the technology to the startup. They use various support from sign, uh, uh, support in terms of resources from sign, team and capital structure and all those basically mentoring inputs from sign. Currently they are actually they have raised more than 300 crore of funding at a collective valuation of 1000 crore. So this is one, one example. Search lab I'll just talk about one more and then I'll stop it. Search lab is actually a smart switch for like energy efficiency. This is the company which leverages our, our uh, network in Sweden, and right now they have four clients from S Sweden. I'll stop here for the lack of time. Thank you very much. Just one announcement. Uh, we are live streaming this event and so we are happy to share that this has reached out to the whole country. Thank you.
So let's give a big clap to our first speaker, panelist, Dr. Pahini. She shared a very important view. The institution should enable the startups to mature faster with all the stakeholder support. So that IIT Bombay has created, it's a good model. I would also like to, she was mentioning to CSAR. CSAR labs are also, I think they are promoting this kind of startups. RMIT has given a good model. A professor like Shivani and Prasad, just get up. Shivani is also a professor in RMIT Institute of Space Science and Technology. She is also a director of a company, simultaneously. Let's give a big clap. She has made a display here where how do you identify a person using physiological parameters like the occluded vision, then skeletal configuration, gestures, and gait. So you will be able to precisely say this is the individual, which has a lot of implication in security, both domestic security, internal security, as well as uh, external. Please sit down. Similarly, our students, student startup, can you just, they have developed a regenerative clutch. This is from Amity Institute of Defense Technology. They have developed a clutch regenerative clutch. As you keep idling, it will generate power. So you imagine how much power you can generate when you are stopping in various places like signals and so on. These are some startups. Let's give a big clap to these young student startup. So what I, why, I, why I made them stand is you have to create both student startup as well as faculty startup. So don't only think only faculty should become startup. Student startup is very, very important. And this enabling mechanism we are creating. Now I will invite Mr. Alok Pandey. He is the founder and CEO of iTech Group. And Mr. Alok Pandey, he is in a different frame which is required for our country. That is social entrepreneurship. And uh, he has started a, a serial entrepreneur, edupreneur, and also researcher for social entrepreneurship. He has got an incubator. And he is working on his fourth startup. He has already uh, given three startups. This is the fourth startup he is working. He is also mentoring encouraging startups and mentor for startups and provide knowledge from the grassroots level what needs to be done. So he is going to share the future journey, what he will become, his company will become, and how he, this message will go to other startups. Over to you, Dr. Alok, Mr. Alok. Let's give a big clap to Alok. Namaste. Entrepreneurship. Sip itna aata hai. Uske ilawa kuch nahi. Isliye ki uske ilawa kuch aayega to entrepreneurship nahi aayega. Ye apne aap mein itna bada factor, apne apne baat mein itna bada kaam ki aaj ki date mein jitne incubation center chal rahe hain uske ilawa usse double bhi ho jaye tab bhi hum har ek entrepreneurship ki problem ya entrepreneur ko address nahi kar sakte hain. पहले तो मैं इस बात के माफी चाहूँगा कि ये जो मेरा प्रेजेंटेशन है बहुत ही कच्चा है इसलिए मुझे लगा था कि ये पैनल डिस्कशन होगा मैं वैसे करूँगा पर जो मेरे पास में है जो मुझे लगा आइडिया टू मार्केट है बट मेरा थोड़ा यहाँ से भी मेरे बीच में बात चल रही थी इफ यू डोंट बॉडर कि मैं मूव कर सकता हूँ बिकॉज मेरी प्रॉब्लम है कि मैं खड़े होकर बात नहीं कर सकता हेलो आई थिंक इज वर्किंग एक्चुअली वो बोलते हैं एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप एक बिहेवियल चेंज है और वो इतना इम्पेसेंट करके रखता है कि एज वे खड़े होने देता नहीं है और मेरा जो भी वर्कशॉप रही वो वर्कशॉप मोड पे रहता है मैं मोनिटरेंस नहीं बोल पाता हूँ और मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगेगा कि बीच में जितने भी एंटरप्रेन्योर्स हैं या और जो मेरे सीनियर्स हैं वो मुझे टोक सकते हैं एंड जितने भी एंटरप्रेन्योर हैं या बडिंग एंटरप्रेन्योर हैं या जो प्रोस्पेक्ट्स हैं वो मुझसे क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं और मैं इसलिए बोल रहा हूं कि मैं बहुत रूट लेवल पे काम कर रहा हूं स्क्रैच लेवल पे काम कर रहा हूं प्री इंक्यूबेशन से पहले जो होता है मैं उस पर काम कर रहा हूं और उन जगह काम कर रहा हूं टीयर टू टीयर थ्री के साथ काम कर रहा हूं जहां पर इनको पता भी नहीं है कि सीड फंडिंग क्या होती है उनको पता भी नहीं है कि वॉट इज अ वेंचर कट लिस्ट उनको इतना पता होता है कि मेरा ये आइडिया है और मुझे इतना फंड चाहिए कहीं से अरेंज हो जाए तो मैं शुरू कर दूंगा वो कोई यूनिकॉर्न बनने के लिए काम नहीं करते उनको ये प्लेटफॉर्म नहीं मिलते जहां पर हम खड़े हैं उनको ऐसे मेंटोर नहीं मिलते तो मैं तो ये बोलता हूं कि मैं यहां से सीखता हूं और जाके वहां डिलीवर कर देता हूं 
और कहीं ना कहीं कोशिश करता हूं कि उनमें से एक या दो लोगों को मैं आगे तक लेकर के आऊं और आप लोग जान के खुशी होगी कि कल ही एक बच्चा ऐसा जो अभी एमबीए भी छोड़िए एक नॉर्मल ग्रेजुएशन किया है पीएचडी में एंट्री की हुई है और उसने काम किया हुआ है ऐसे सोयावैक्स कैंडल्स पे सोयावैक्स कैंडल सब जानते हैं एरमा थेरेपी जहां पर हम लोग एसडीजी की बात भी कर लेते हैं एरमा थेरेपी की बात भी करते हैं और उसने अपने लेवल पे वन सी का एक ऐसा कॉन्ट्रेक्ट सेल साइन किया कि ये कल की बात है और वह बिल्कुल किसी भी बहुत फॉर्मल तरीके से वो नहीं आती है मेरे पास में प्राइवेटली मेरे पास में आती है और सिर्फ इतना बताती है कि सर ये एक छोटा सा आइडिया है हम लोग सिर्फ क्या करते हैं हैंड होल्डिंग सपोर्ट तो हैंड होल्डिंग सपोर्ट लिटरली सर वो है जब हमको एक मेंटोर को वहां तक उसको हाथ पकड़ के चलना पड़ता है उसके क्लाइंट के साथ मुझे बैठना पड़ता है अब मैं क्योंकि तो मैं यहां पर क्यों हूं उसकी वजह बता दू द टॉपिक इज आइडिया टू मार्केट उसके पहले था आप लैब एक्चुअल में ये जो लैब है मैं उसको बोलता हूं लैब कोई भी स्केलिंग करने के लिए स्केल चाहिए होता है फॉरी जैसे बोले कि स्केलिंग करने के लिए क्या चाहिए मेरे को स्किल चाहिए तो बिना स्किल के स्केल नहीं हो सकता और लैब जो होती है वो जहां पर जो लेबोरेटरी में जो चीजें होती हैं वो हमारे स्किल को अप्रूव करती है कि जो मैंने स्किल बनाया है जो प्रोडक्ट बनाया हुआ है उसकी अप्रूवल होता है तो अभी मैं क्योंकि तो इसके पहले जहां पर एक आप स्लाइड देख रहे थे मैंने एक आर्डिएशन का एक टूल बनाया था क्योंकि मेरे पास प्रॉब्लम यह आ रही थी उस रूट लेवल पर जहां पर टीयर टू टीयर थ्री कंट्रीज प्लेसेस पे सॉरी कि वो बच्चे ये बोल रहे थे कि आई एम नॉट एबल टू गेट द आइडिया आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हैव समथिंग आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डू समथिंग बट आइडिया नहीं है तो मैंने आइडिया को अपनी छोटी समझ से बहुत सिंपल चार वर्ड में एक कॉर्डेंट में डिवाइड किया है इट इज कॉल्ड द आइडिएशन कॉर्डेंट वो क्या है मैंने जैसे बोला कि मुझे बहुत अच्छा गाना आता है तो वो मेरी हॉबी थी अगर मैंने हॉबी पे स्किल कर लिया तो वो हॉबी मेरी स्किल में कन्वर्ट हो गई तो मैं चार में डिवाइड किया था हॉबी स्किल प्रॉब्लम एंड सोशल इश्यू और सर आप बिलीव करिए इन चार के अलावा कोई कोई इकोसिस्टम में या किसी भी स्टार्टअप इकोसिस्टम में कोई आइडिया आता ही नहीं है उन चार के अलावा कुछ भी नहीं है सिर्फ चार हैं एक अच्छा डांसर जिसकी हॉबी थी और उन चार इकोसिस्टम पे चार कॉर्डिनेंट में कोई दो चीज मिल जाती है तो वहां पर बिजनेस बन जाता है दैट इज बाई द हॉबी अगर डांसर की हॉबी है अगर उसने प्रोफेशनली ट्रेन कर लिया है तो स्किल बन जाती है तो वहां पर वो प्रोफेशनली अपना काम कर पाता है और वहीं पर एक मैं दिव्यांशु जी बैठे हुए हैं जो कहते हैं प्रॉब्लम जो बोलते हैं सोशल इश्यू के लिए काम करते हैं जो पैपसॉप की बात करते हैं जो हमें यहां पर लेकर के आए इनकी वजह से मैं खड़ा हूं यहां पर तो वो यही बोलते हैं कि सोशल इश्यूज बहुत है तो वो लोग वहां पर काम करते हैं तो यहां पर मैंने चार चीजों पर बात किया कि हॉबी स्किल सोशल इश्यूज आपके पास में अगर कहीं दिख रहे हैं और एक जो प्रॉब्लम्स की मैं बात कर रहा हूं अगर इन चारों में अगर आप रहते हैं तो आपके पास में एक आइडिया जनरेट हो गया स्टिल इसके बाद हम बोलते हैं क्योंकि मैं बहुत ग्राउंड लेवल पे काम कर रहा हूं मैं बोलता हूं बच्चों से या अपने जो बच्चे आते हैं कि पहले मार्केट पे काम करो एक्चुअल में मैं उस पर काम करता हूं पहले बेचता हूं बाद में बनवाता हूं पहले मार्केट क्या है मार्केट में नीड क्या आ रही है मार्केट में क्या चीज है क्योंकि प्रॉब्लम सर क्या होती है सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है हम लोगों के इंक्यूबेटर्स के साथ में मैं बहुत छोटा इंक्यूबेटर हूं अभी प्राइवेट इंक्यूबेटर की तरह से जाना जाता हूं मेरी फाउंडेशन है आईटेक इनोवेशन फाउंडेशन जहां पे हम लोग 12 साल काम करके आ रहे हैं वन टू वन में किसी तरह की गवर्नमेंट अभी फंडिंग नहीं उठाई है बिकॉज अभी हम लोग बहुत ही स्ट्रक्चरली प्लान नहीं थे बट अब हम लोग उस पर पिच कर रहे हैं लेकिन तो उसके पहले भी मेरे नीचे थर्टी स्टार्टअप निकल चुके हैं जो अब तक अपने सेल्फ सपोर्ट पर काम कर रहे हैं द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस हुआ क्या जैसे मैं बताता हूं अभी मैंने क्या काम किया हुआ है पहले बता देता हूं तो आपको बेटर आइडिया होगा कि मैं इस अथॉरिटी से क्यों बोल पा रहा हूं आ, ये एक आईटेक ग्रुप है आईटेक ग्रुप की सब एक ही लाइन है टैग लाइन है पढ़ रहे होंगे इनक्रेडिबल टेक्निक्स टू शेप योर फ्यूचर और ये जो राय में ये मेरी बनाई हुई है क्योंकि कई बार क्या है एंटरप्रनरशिप के बारे में इतना पढ़ते हैं और मैं उसके पहले बोल दू मैं लास्ट स्पीकर हूं और लास्ट स्पीकर के पास एक थ्रेड होता है थ्रेड ऑफ रिपीटिशन और जो कि एंटरप्रेनर के पास भी होता है कि कुछ ऐसा ना हो जो कॉपी हो जाए इनोवेटिव तो थ्रेड भी है लेकिन बेनिफिट भी है कि मैं शायद मेरी चीजें शायद थोड़ा अलग होंगी आ, लेकिन और थ्रेड ये है कि अगर मेरी सही रिसर्च नहीं हुई और मैंने ग्राउंड पे काम नहीं किया तो हमसे अच्छे लोग बोल के जा चुके हैं तो रिपीट ना हो जाए और जहां रिपीटेशन है वहां पर इनोवेशन नहीं है और जहां इनोवेशन नहीं है वहां एंटरप्रेनरशिप की बात हम नहीं कर सकते हैं क्योंकि फिर वो स्टार्टअप नहीं है वो बिजनेस हो सकता है स्टार्टअप नहीं हो सकता इनोवेशन के बिना स्टार्टअप नहीं होगा मे बी कॉपी पेस्ट हो जाएगा और वो बिजनेस तो बना सकते हैं तो मैंने उसी लिए बनाया हुआ था कि व्हाट इज द एंटरप्रेनरशिप ने चार लाइन दिखाई थी उसमें कि द एंटरप्रेनर इज विजन टू रियलिटी हम कुछ सोचते
पढ़ा करके मैं किसी को एंटरप्रेन नहीं बना सकता लेकिन इन चार चीजों को मैंने सिखा दिया तो उस बच्चे को समझ में आता है कि ये एंटरप्रेनरशिप की डेफिनेशन क्या है और उसी के लिए बोलते हैं जब ये चार चीजें खत्म हो जाती हैं तब नीचे आता है जब वो एंजॉय करता है कि इट मल्टी कलर एक्सप्रेसिव ड्राइंग ऑन ए प्लेन कैनवस जब वो खुद बनाता है उसके पास कुछ भी नहीं होता है एंड दैट गिव्स अ न्यू मीनिंग एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग टू एवरी मोमेंट इसके आगे और भी था कि हर दिन एक नए चैलेंजेस आते हैं और वो उसको फेस करता है ये एक आईटेक ग्रुप का एक तरीके से देख सकते हैं कि आईटेक का विजन क्या है कि लोगों को ट्रैक करता है एंड आफ्टर दैट Yeah. I will take uh, one minute only, sir, because I am an entrepreneur, <laughs> and I will say, give, uh, take a simple profit of the one minute, thirty six seconds. Uh, just, जो मेरा विजन था यहाँ तक पहुँचने का वो ये कि सिर्फ दो चीजों की बात करूँगा. आपके पास में आइडिया एंड मार्केट तो मैंने कहा कि अगर मैं किसी की भी टेक्निकल सेशन की बात करता हूं तो टेक्निकलिटीज मेरे पास में वो है कि मैं मार्केट को उस स्केल से समझता हूं क्योंकि मेरा जो एंड प्रोडक्ट है वो एक सिंगल पर्सन के पास जाएगा दैट मींस अगर मैं कुछ बना रहा हूं मैं एग्जांपल दे देता हूं मैं सोए बैग जो एरमा थेरेपी की बनाता हूं तो वो मेरे एक सिंगल एक कस्टमर के पास पहुंचता है तो मैं चाहता हूं कि मेरे जितने भी इंक्यूबिटीज हैं वो उस कस्टमर की नीड को समझे और उसके फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म को लें तो फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म मेरा पहला रूल है मार्केटिंग के लिए और उस फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म से हम उसकी उसको कन्वर्ट करते हैं मार्केट रिसर्च से और मार्केट रिसर्च से बनता है मेरा एक बहुत ही इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट ये सिंपल फिलॉसफी जिस किसी भी एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप की है इसके बीच की जो टेक्नोलॉजीज हैं उसके लिए इंक्यूबेटर्स बैठे हुए हैं मेंटोर्स बैठे हुए हैं जो उस बच्चे को स्टार्टअप को समझाते हैं बिकॉज स्टार्टअप के पास सर इतना ना टाइम है ना कि समझ है जो 20 साल का 21 साल का है कि वो अपने प्रोडक्ट में लगा रहता है कि वो इस पॉलिसीज को समझे तो सर लोग बैठे हैं सीनियर लोग जो उस पॉलिसीज को कन्वे करते हैं और उस पॉलिसीज को सजेस्ट करने के लिए दिव्यांशु जी बैठे हुए हैं जो अभी नेक्स्ट सेशन में आपके साथ में होंगे तो आप उनसे क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं अब सर ने मुझे एक मिनट दिया था मैंने और जो खत्म किया बाकी एक मिनट मैंने छोड़ा है ऑडियंस के लिए अगर वो चाहे तो पूछ सकती है मेरे से कुछ अगर लगता है कि कोई चीज रिलेवेंट है So, give a big hand to Mr. Alok. <clears throat> Now it is time for us to listen from the floor. I, we have another ten minutes. So, any suggestion, any new point which you want to bring, or you want to ask a clarification, or uh, suggest something to the startups and others. Maybe that from here. Why don't we start? Can you give this mic? Hello. Um, Just take one minute and say that what you what you want the nation should do to succeed. Ah uh, yes. So uh, hello and uh, good afternoon. This is Saurabh Mohan Saxena representing a startup called Aots, and there's a vehicle which is uh, put outside runs on hydrogen. So uh, yes, an innovation in terms of using the technique into uh, the current vehicles of IC engines. uh you know i on this forum of discussion i would like to put an in this forum where uh, everybody sir is there we are related to nrdc indian oil so so one is innovation stands for something new which has been born it is not it is unique so it is not there and it is not you know it is is different and when you get to the market market it set in an old fashion the policies are set in a old fashion so this and we are talking of so much of innovation happening of course you touched upon the the freedom and the and the and the uh, policy framework which is very flexible so you know when you get to like the startup which i am looking in it's so very structured you know automotive is i have been into industry for last 20 years all multinational six sigma we are talking everything is so defined that there's no you know hanky panky here i am working coming from the same industry and there's a innovation which has to fit into that old structured stream now what to do so there are rules set there everything is set but it performs people see they believe that this is running but how do you scratch there is no standard available there is no you know policy framework available uh, of course market wise you know imagine if i have to go to tatas they will say you go back to this guy this in your, this uh, ministry is like uh, cmvr the the motor regulator this thing they have to write where is the standard available now for a startup imagine if you have done the job also and i am to thank this is already patented so at least the fear of copying is not there but the challenge is now how to get all these thing done so you have to be a very high level kind of a 
bureaucrat to say, oh, in a in an organization like a company, you will say, Mr. Department, do this, do this. But for a startup, so that is the difficulty so which I would point. Po you want the policy, tweet. policy, the policy, change. because innovation is always means we are talking startup is backed by innovation, and innovation is all new. So maybe that's how the institutions. I'm based out of IIT, and I'm facing challenges sitting with IIT Delhi. Sitting supported by Indian Oil Corporation, NRDC, and uh, and these are busy. Anyway, still, you know, so there's a fallacy which I want to address over here in this. No, forum. it's very important. So how he has to brought a here? very important point. The existing policies it needs to be tweaked to the emerging technologies coming from startup like green hydrogen, uh, the, the hybrid car which he has displayed over there. So this is one important thing which he has given. The second thing which he has also brought up is the standards, because we always stand, looks for ISTM and uh, automobile, the automobile standards outside or any other standard, BIS. But we need to have our own standards quickly generated, these two issues. Very good. Uh, can I have the next? Uh, just uh, briefly I will say that we are working on that set of work that how we look at a startup ecosystem uh, because we say that you have a differentiated startup ecosystem to support this type of deep technology and other startups so that is where we are looking into it and where we are bringing also that we have to look at the technology readiness and all those things, aspects of it, because naturally those type of, so that is a very valid question and I know that it is coming from a person who has developed this uh, hydrogen car which is standing outside, so we should also clap for him that the way he has uh, come and he has parked this car at, uh, at two o'clock at night. So you can see the passion which he has with him and so we like that. Blessings yeah. to you <laughs> to succeed and also become a billionaire. Now coming to policy research, why don't you address this point which he said, the standards and policy. You are looking at the policy at your state. Why don't you introduce sure. uh, So uh, I'm lucky enough to uh, being dealing with the central and state both policies and many congratulations to Sauravji for the great achievement of green hydrogen car. So uh, probably Poini men can agree with me, the government started their policy structure with the premium institutes, but you know, uh, with going process, it, the policies are made for the last, for the tier two and the, for the last mile to get achieved, not for the premium institute students to take benefit out of it. Uh, that's how they are designed. Uh, they are meant for the people and for the innovators who don't have this, uh, you know, excess of uh, ecosystem, especially <coughs> in the tier two, tier three cities. But again, IITs and top premium colleges which are performing, they are totally performing on their academicians, on their, you know, innovators, their startups, and that's a, that they really, you know, deserve a round clap of applause because, you know, they highly, they, they are not connected to the policy ecosystem, I, of the government policy ecosystem, I understand that, and it's, they are totally doing on their own brainchild. And, uh, but the, when we talk about the government policies, they are usually meant for the tier two and tier three sectors where the other things are hardly to reach and government try to reach there before any private player comes in or any other player comes in. So that's all, sir. Thank you. So can we move to the, uh, can you just address this issue? Uh, because you are one of the very successful startup, maybe the last one. So, yes, Saurabhavan Saxena ji is my colleague. In fact, we have been, uh, we were in the same program with IOCL and NRDC. We are, and in fact, we both are facing the same similar kind of issues on the topic. But uh, uh, he, he is quite, uh, he has all the experience required to do things that, that he is doing. He is, in fact, associated with IIT Delhi as well. And as far as policy concerns are there, uh, what I feel is policies are designed for the bulk of popul population or uh, majority of people that can be addressed through the policies, let's say 95% of the, of the problems that are there, but there would always be outliers, there would always be a technology that does not fit in the policy and there, there would be confusions 
wherein you do not know how exactly to proceed ahead. For example, uh, there is an area called space biotechnology <laughs> and uh, we are doing something in that and there is no space policy out there which would guide us even tell us whether we are doing things that are uh, borderline legal or not at this point in time. So I agree with him that there are policy loopholes but for, uh, I, I guess all policies are designed that way that addresses most of the issues and for this we will we'll have to knock doors here and there again and again. That is why this NICPR, the policy research, I am sure Sujit ji will now take it up. So I think yeah. I don't have any answer to yeah. what I think you can hear me, right? Yeah. I don't have any answer to what you people are talking about. Uh, what you mentioned about it, as long as there is no policy and if you have very clear case, it's not illegal, just get into That would be my, my response. Right? Policy, so what stops you? Unless you are like, you know, killing or murdering or crime, uh, uh, getting into a crime act, right? So just get into it if there is no policy. Yeah? I got the vacant because when you have vacant, which is 10 years old. Right. Imagine it is, it could, it is as new because it's less than 20 years old. Right. Correct. No, so that I, you know, you, no, so what I'm trying to say is that, that there are lots of fuzzy areas. So for example, I, I'll give you another uh, like, you know, analogy here. When this aggregate yes. caps came in, right? There is typically for all drivers, there is a licensing. Commercial drivers, there is a li different licensing. Aggregate caps, they didn't have it. And suddenly after five, six years, now states are putting some kind of restrictions, right? So. But if it is fuzzy, but as long as you are not directly doing any criminal act or wrong act, just get into it. That, that's thank my Thank you. Like, you know, thank you very much. Is. Due to paucity of time, I have to <laughs> conclude. Now, any student, I want to give one student, youngster, just standing up, asking, giving you a thought. Are you, yes. She, uh, maybe just 30 seconds. So I think what we will do is, uh, we will discuss, uh, just 30, 15 seconds. Uh. Okay, right, sir. So I just want to say, we are talking about innovations, we are talking about government policies. I would like to point out here that government is taking a lot of initiatives to promote startups. And uh, there is a duty of startups also that we should have the goal to design a society in which we wish to live in. Thank you. Yeah, thank With you. that way, I hand it over to Dr. Sujit and also Sandhya to conclude. Thank you very much, sir, for this exciting and lively session. We really enjoyed this session. And with this, we conclude the uh, morning sessions. And now we will move on to exhibition and poster visit. Uh, the exhibition and poster visit has been coordinated by Mr. Avinash Sitej, Principal Scientist of CSAR NISPAR, Dr. Shivnarayan Nishad, Senior Scientist, and Ms. Kirti Bansal, Technical Assistant. We will go for 10 minutes post, uh, exhibition and poster visit, and then we will proceed for lunch. So the guest of honor for this poster exhibition and poster visit will be uh, Commodar Amit Rastogi. Thank you. So we also request to reassemble in half an hour for the next session. Thank you. <laughs>